Okay, so we're on what's on the shelf, part four. So on this one, we have Las Vegas Royale, a few acres of snow through the ages, uh, a story of civilization, Puerto Rico and Notre Dame. So with this one, Las Vegas Royale, now I played this game for the first time was just Las Vegas. So it was a previously printed copy of this. And I was trying to find a copy of it and kind of saying, maybe I'll just get dice and make my own version of it. When somebody mentioned that it had been reprinted as the Royale, which kind of adds a little bit of extra things to it, but the base game is still in there. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. Um, so this is what Las Vegas Royale looks like. It's, it looks busy there because there's tons going on. There's a bunch of different, um, kind of extra things you can add. So there's base game plus expansions that you can add. Uh, there's multiple ones, but they recommend that you do three at a time. And honestly, I haven't really played with that so much because I love the base game so much. Um, this is what it looks like when we normally play it. So each um area is assigned a number and money is um put onto each one of those so there's two uh different bills associated to each of the numbers and it's kind of an area control game so you roll the dice and then you can select a number but you have to take all of those dice from that number to place onto that area so if i had three ones i could take all my three ones put them in the ones so now i have a control of three there um but if another player has the same amount as i do so if another player has three we eliminate each other and then the person who has two ones on that spot would end up getting uh the prize so their first player the one that has the most uh, control of a number will get the higher a higher prize that's available there. And the second player will get the second one. If nobody controls it, like if you eliminate each other and nobody's gone to a number, well, then that money's just discarded. You do that for a few rounds, and it's whoever has the most money at the end is the winner. Um, when I play it, I always play it with the golden dice. Now, that is actually not part of the game, but when I played the my friend's copy, the original one, he had golden dice with it. So the way this works is everybody has two golden dice. And if you notice, there's one dice that has black pips and then the rest have white pips. So the black pip is worth two. So it's worth and counts as two. The, all the other dice counts as one. And the golden dice removes uh, a dice. So if I had rolled and I again had ones, um, and I have three ones and one golden dice one. So I could take all the ones and I can't leave any dice behind. If you select one, you've got to take all the dice that have the ones. And then I could take all the ones, put them in the area for ones, but because I have a golden dice there, I have to remove a dice. So ideally there's another player's dice and I would remove their dice instead of my own. And then that golden dice is used up. So it's gone and I cannot use it again for this round. Um, you keep going that way until everybody's dice is all placed. Um, and it's kind of neat that way too as Gail with the golden dice because when you're all done placing your dice doesn't mean you're done because somebody could boot one of your dice out and it goes back to you then you have to re-roll and place it somewhere else. So um, yeah, Las Vegas Royale is a really neat game. Um, it's always like it's it's a filler. It's an easy game, but it's fun. And it's like kind of get that dice rolling excitement going for the money. So it's great. Uh, the next one I have in there is a few acres of snow. Um, I've played this one only once. Um, and actually, since uh, I've taken the picture of that cubby, I've actually donated this game to the Falcon Library. Um, so it'll be available there at the next Falcon. So this is a Martin Wallace game. I'm a fan of Martin Wallace. Um, it's a two-player game, and it's it's neat. Like it's a historical game. So one player plays as um, you know army coming from the south, so from the U.S. And the other one is the army from north, uh, from uh, Canada, but I think it was before Canada became a country. And it's kind of in the Quebec area, so it has like a lot of French influence. And the cities that you control, uh, it has a lot of historical accuracy to it. Um, and it's an area control game because you're trying to take control of the area and win the, the battle, win the war. Um, so this was 
It's a neat one. It's a two-player game. Um, I mean, it's not pretty to look at. Like, it's kind of a bland-looking game, but it is neat. So, um, next one I have here is Through the Ages, The Steward of Civilization, and I have actually never played this one. Um, I have played through the ages a new story of civilization, my brother's copy. So I had, I got um, the previous uh, published version. Um, but yeah, so I bought it during the pandemic, so I haven't actually played with it. And those tend to be heavier games, so it's not um, my kids aren't going to be the one playing with uh, this one with me. So and I have something for civilization games for some reason. I have one a lot. And most of them are in place, so. Um, this one is neat. Like I mean, I said, I haven't played it. Um, the one that did play was neat. It was a beast to learn. <laughs> so I think we had spent like all morning to get through a couple of turns just to learn how to play. So probably playing with somebody who's played before would make a big difference, but it was me and my brother. None of us had played. So we got the rule. And honestly, with the, the new, the, so the newer version one, the rule book is really well made where they have one that's just kind of step by step. Here's what you want to do this and then kind of walks you through your first game. So it teaches you how to play, but it was still still quite a massive game to learn. Um, next one I have in that cubby is Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico was gifted to me a long, long time ago, well before I got into modern board games. and at one like so i had it and hadn't opened it for a while and at one point i opened it and me and the kids were going to try to play it and then my kids weren't quite teenagers at that time so we opened this game and we set it up and again it's i mean it's not an ugly game but it's not a very attractive game to play and we set it up got through like one round and then they're kind of looking at me and i'm like yeah we don't have to play this one <laughs> so it got back in the box and i hadn't played it for years so this is pictures of the first time i played it and then i actually like it quite a bit now um but yeah this isn't an entry level game um so with this one what's kind of really interesting is you take turn selecting the action and the person who selects the action kind of gets a little bit extra out of it but then everybody else does that same action so it's and so you don't really get to control what you're trying to do you're colonizing the island of puerto rico kind of uh, growing uh growing resources cultivating it trading it like it's it's definitely an economic game that's interesting uh and i enjoy it but yeah not the first time i played i enjoy it now uh, and there's just a bit of a close-up picture of that one um the next game i have on that shelf is notre dame um, and this is one that I had purchased um, secondhand through a friend and I hadn't played it. And then I ran into him at a uh, gaming uh, event that we were both at and I had brought this game and he's offered to show it to me. Um, a lot of these games tend to be very beige, but this one is neat. And what's really neat about it is depending on the amount of players that you have, how many big, uh, portion of the boards you bring in. So I three players you bring in three section and it's kind of shifted in a different way four players you bring in four and it's like a different area that connects to the middle and five so it's really neat how the board game connects um so with this one it's uh card drafting that kind of selects the different actions that you can do so and you're moving around your area uh collecting money uh doing things and then you can also contribute towards building the cathedral of notre dame and that kind of gives you more fame but you also have to be careful to keep the rat population under control in your area so that disease doesn't take over um it's it's an interesting game it's neat um yeah again not one that's super pretty to look at and probably not one that i would recommend as an entry level game if i had tried this one on my own at the same time as puerto rico probably wouldn't have gotten played either um and then that's it for that cubby so yeah if you want to see what i uh, post of the different games that i play on facebook it's it's green areas playing all the games or on instagram is board game mama all right thanks you guys take care